Hey, it's Michelle your CSC Biology Tutor. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing 20 simple tips to help you study more effectively and get prepared for your upcoming exams. So, if you want to get ready for exams with confidence, keep watching. Okay, the first and most important tip is to revise early. Don't wait to the last minute and then say, okay, well, I'm gonna start cramming. Revise as early as possible. So especially from the time you get the exam timetable, you know when your exams are coming, get prepared. And you shouldn't even be waiting to the last minute. You should be studying, you know, you should be going through your notes, you should be reviewing your notes at the end of each day at school so that you would have a familiarity with the work that you're learning at school. So you don't wait till exams come around and then expect to know cramming everything. So revising early is the first tip. The second tip is to know your syllabus. Get your hands on the syllabus. So the syllabus is gonna outline the exact objectives that you need to prepare for the exams, what is gonna be covered in the exams. So you don't want to be preparing for the exams and you're not even sure what, what is supposed to be, be done because sometimes your teacher might even skip some, some topics or they may not cover certain objectives that the actual syllabus would have. It might be due to time constraints or Whatever the issue is, but it's good to get your hand on the syllabus so you know exactly what it is you would be revising. So you know exactly what you'll be tested on, so know your syllabus. So a tip would be to go through the syllabus, take off the topics that you have covered in school so that your teacher would have taught. Put an X by the ones that you might be struggling with to understand and then put a question mark by the ones that you have no idea your teacher might not have covered them as yet. So go through the syllabus, tick off, X off, question mark, get those objectives, you know, sorted out so you know exactly what you have to study, what you need to work on more closely and find out about those topics that maybe your teacher might not have even taught you. So know your syllabus, that's tip number two. The next tip is to create a study plan. So going forward, after knowing what objectives are to be covered on the syllabus, start to plan out how exactly you are going to revise over the few weeks or a couple months that you have before the exam. So you don't want to just wait and you know say, okay, well, study this and study that. You want to have a set plan in place. So preparing a study plan is key. So if you have three weeks ahead of the exams versus two months, you know, your study plan is going to look a little different. So creating a study plan is important. So as you're making your study plan, you should be deciding on when is the best time for you to actually study. So you need to know what days and what times you're actually going to be sitting down and studying. So it may be the morning, might be three, three days a week, might be the afternoon, evening, whatever suits you best. You need to know when you're gonna set your study time. So now once you have settled on your study times, now, going back to your whole study plan, you should be really organizing the plan in a way that you put the hard topics first. Those topics that you're struggling with, you know, the ones that are really giving you a hard time, you should really be studying those first. Leave the easy topics for later on. So you put the hard topics first, then you go over, review the easier topics, and then coming up to the exams, then you're going to go back to the hard topics again. So as like a little refresher, but you always should start with the hard and more challenging topics first. Once you have your study plan, so you have your syllabus with you, your study plan, your study time, so the days and times that you're working with, 
you gotta look for a study a study place you gotta have somewhere where you can go where it is quiet free of distractions to actually focus and study so that might be on the dining room table once you don't have any distractions from family members it could be a desk in your room somewhere where you can sit and study and when it says sit and me sit up right we don't want to be in the bed studying because that is too comfortable too relaxed you're gonna fall asleep and i can tell you that so you need to pick a nice place where you're comfortable but not too comfortable away from distractions so you can focus now once you're ready to get cracking on studying you have to consider brain food now you don't want to start studying and you're hungry you haven't had anything to eat you need brain food because your brain is what is going to be helping you to focus to take in all the information so you need to feed the brain so you need to feed the brain with some healthy foods so rich in nutrients and I could possibly do another video on brain foods that help, you know, with memory and retention and focus. But you got to eat healthy, eat the right foods that would help you to remember the information that you are studying. So make sure that your brain has the energy it needs to work. Don't skip breakfast. So have something in your stomach so your brain isn't starving before you actually start studying. Another tip is exercising. So exercising is a good way to get that blood flowing to the brain to deliver the nutrients and the oxygen. So it literally wakes you up. So it would be good to do exercising like maybe an hour or so before you sit down to study to really get the heart pumping, that blood going to the brain. It really makes you more alert and focused and ready to actually sit down and study. So exercising is a good tip along with the correct foods to eat. Now once you sit down to study, so your stomach is full, your brain is ready to go, you need to get rid of the distractions. So no TV should be on. And the number one distraction for you young people, the phone. Make sure the phone is turned off or on silent because you don't want notifications coming through all the time and distracting you. So when you sit down to study, get rid of the phone. So that's one of the key tips just before you're about to study. Now to set the mood for studying, some people find it useful and helpful to put a little background music. And we're talking about soothing music that wouldn't make you go to sleep, but will help you to focus. So like classical music, instrumentals. Now you can't go and put on a song that you like, like favorite songs that you can sing along to. That will be a waste of time because instead of studying, you're singing along with the song. But nice background music just to keep you in a focused, concentrated mode would be helpful. Now, when you're ready to actually study, it's good to set a timer. Set a timer so that you will study for like small chunks of time at a, you know, a time. You don't want to be studying for long periods. You don't want to be studying for an hour. Half an hour periods should be the maximum. So take a break like every half an hour or so. And this is gonna help you to more retain information better. So you take frequent breaks rather than just one long study session. So you can do like a half an hour, take a, like a 10 minute break, another half an hour, another 10 minute break, but never do long periods of time because your, your, your brain is not gonna be focusing and retaining the information as, as best as. So another important tip this is known as active reading and recall. So when you're actually studying, you want it to be active. You don't just want to be sitting down reading through the notes and, you know, falling asleep and dozing off. You want it to be something that's going to keep you awake and keep your, your brain alert. So that's what we mean by active, active reading. So this would include reading out loud. So as you're going through maybe a paragraph, read out loud. And then maybe pause after a paragraph or a section and then try to figure out what have you just read? What have you just learned? Talk to yourself and say, okay, well, I learned X, Y, Z. So pretty much recall what you would have just read out loud. So you hear yourself read it out and then you're now recalling whatever information that comes to mind. So try, so try explaining that 
what you write to yourself in your own words. So that, that's what the active reading and recall is all about. And on that note, going on to the next tip, brain dumping. So you may have never heard of this, but after reading, it's good to just get a scrap of paper and write down exactly everything that you remember from what you would have read. So you read through a paragraph, maybe a chapter, and then just dump it all out on the page, whatever it is you remember, it might be diagrams along with it, just write down everything that comes to mind that you recalled from what you read. So that's what brain dumping is about. So that is a very useful tip. So it really tests your retention and your memory. See how well you know you recall the information. Now, as important as reading is, reading through your notes and your textbook, you don't want to just limit it to reading. You should be including videos, 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 videos. Trust me, videos filled with animations and explanations, they can help you understand what you're learning. So maybe even before a study period, you can watch a video on the topic that you are going to be studying. Watch that video that's related to that. And then afterwards, you can even try brain dumping, seeing what exactly you would have retained from the video, what you understood from the video. So watching videos on YouTube can be very, very helpful in your study process. So remember, videos combine both the visual and the audio and can really help you to retain the information better and understand the processes going on. So the next step is to make connections in your studying. Connect topics that you would have learned from different sections of the syllabus and try to relate them and, and Make the connections, you know, see how this topic is related to that topic. That really helps with the understanding. So for example, with blood glucose regulation, that's all to do with homeostasis. And then you can connect it back with respiration, how, you know, the glucose needs to get into the cells for energy. So you need to be able to connect the topics. Another tip is using flashcards. So this is extremely useful for trying to remember certain terms and definitions. And it is gonna be very helpful coming on to exams when you just want a quick review. So flashcards is a helpful method in your study time. So definitely try using flashcards for terms and processes, definitions, that kind of thing. You can even use diagrams as well. Now the next tip is practice testing. After each session, possibly, try answering questions maybe from the textbook or, you know, questions that your teacher might have given in class. Try answering the questions related to the topic to really see how much you understand. So you really need to test and assess your knowledge and understanding. So that's what practice testing is about. And if you realize that you, you don't understand a particular topic, you need to go back over it. And then of course, closely linked to practice testing would be going through past papers. Now this is the ultimate thing that you need to do. Go through as many past papers as possible. So you get an idea of the exam format, the types of questions that can come. So making sure you get your hands on some past papers or watching past paper solutions video like what I offer in my courses they will definitely help you get prepared for the exam. So you have a variety of topics being covered in each past paper. Now, in addition to having your own personal study time, getting together as a group would be beneficial. So working together can really be useful in preparing for your exams. So one person might be strong in one particular topic, you might be stronger in another topic. Helping each other can be very effective. So you can organize these study groups maybe like once every two weeks to cover particular topics, like really going deep into particular topics. Or you can wait to approach in the exams maybe a couple days before the exam and then just review the entire syllabus. Either way could work. Now my last and final tip is to get help. If you realize that you are struggling in a particular area, no matter how many times you revise it, study it, you still don't have a clue, you don't understand it, it is advisable to seek help early. Don't wait to the last minute and then trying to find a tutor to help you get the help that you need as early as possible. So there you have it, 20 tips for effective study. 
So hopefully you found these tips useful and helpful in your preparation for exams. And if there's any particular tip that you really liked and thought was very useful, comment below. And if you have any other tips that you'd like to share, don't hesitate to share in the comment section below as well. So all the best in your exams and I wish you much success. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe, like and share. And don't forget to hit that notification bell.